Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I have a video for you about the Call of Duty Echo Chamber. The gameplay that you're seeing right now is me using the MP7 with Fast Mag and Suppressor here on the map Nuketown 2025. It's going to be a good game for me. I'm going to start off kind of strong, struggle a little in the middle, come out strong in the end. We are going to end up winning this game. I'm going to have a good score, but it's not a gimme game. I had to actually work for it. The other team made me sweat a little bit, and I consider this to be a good game, and I consider this gameplay that I'd like to post. Not super high scoring, but you're going to see me work for it. What you're also going to see is a person boosting. Boosting. It's a person on our team boosting with his friend on the other team. They like to get in, up in the tops of these buildings with tactical insertions and boost. Me and J-Hub later on near the end of the video are going to manage to box him in a corner, kill anybody that approaches and leave him stuck there until he rage quits. I personally thought this was really funny and when I was thinking about it, I realized or I, I started thinking like, was this really an original idea? Is this some spontaneous spur of the moment thing that popped in and that I just had the idea to do? And the reality is that it wasn't. It was an echo. It was a part of the Call of Duty echo chamber. I got these ideas from Booster Justice, from KYR Speedy, from dozens of people that do trolling videos. I guess Minnesota Burns would be one. Some people do troll videos, some people do anti-trolling, some people are trolling the trolls, but that's where the ideas came from. They were good ideas, they were stuck, I had fun with them, but what we're going to be talking about today is the Call of Duty Echo Chamber and how exactly this works. And I'm going to pose a question to you. Have you played Search and Destroy lately? Back in the day, Search and Destroy used to be the try-hard gameplay. You had people going for montages for the kill cams, definitely, but that was where the hardest of the hardcore played. These days, not so much. Search and Destroy is more of the game mode for goofing off and going for quick sh uh, kind of quick scopes, and it's going for reaction videos. I tried to play it a couple of, it's actually probably about a week or so ago now, with uh, J-Hub, and especially with Phase Cross, and we got yelled at for not sniping. Oh my god, you guys are terrible. I can't believe you're not sniping. It's like, no, I don't really like to, to trick shot. You don't trick shot and use red guns because you're bad and because you're a faggot and that sort of stuff. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm sorry. We also ran into many people attempting to troll, attempting to box us in, collaborate with the other team, do any sort of thing to get a rise or a reaction. Usually it was female initiated. The troll lobbies were very easy to spot because they would have a girl on the mic. That's really rare. Most women play without mics because they don't like being harassed. But they know players talk to men, so that's what they would do. Uh, we also had some people ask, uh, do you guys rage when you die? And I was like, uh, no, we're very strongly anti-raging and anti-rage quit over here. It's like, these guys are fags. Let's leave. They all left. And I'm like, wow, well, that doesn't seem very fun. And you had people reacting off of each other. A lot of on the mic communication, because that's how Search and Destroy works, but they're reacting off of each other to an extreme degree, kind of telling the most extreme jokes with fake laughs and bouncing back and forth. And it was almost the definition of an echo chamber. What we're going to talk about next is what is the actual definition of an echo chamber? This one I pull from Wikipedia. I usually find the Wikipedia definitions a little bit more fun than Merriam-Webster or anything like that. And the Wikipedia definition of an echo chamber is a situation in which an idea, belief, or... Uh Ooh, I almost screwed that up. A situation in which ideas or beliefs are amplified or reinforced by transmission inside a quote enclosed space. And this is in the context of a media or a social gathering or something like that. And what it's talking about is a community that supports an idea and bounces it back and forth amongst members of the community until it solidifies and becomes a part of the community become, until it becomes a it becomes a thing, something that happens, kind of like in Search and Destroy. It's no longer the thing to play Search and Destroy. You play Search and Destroy to goof off, to do montages, that sort of thing. That is the thing that Search and Destroy has become, and that's kind of what an echo chamber can do. I've got some examples here. It's very common in our news networks here in the United States. You'll see some people say, blah, 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 insert my opinion here. Some people say, blah, 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 and then the next reporter will actually report on the first reporter who's just kind of making stuff up and say, such and such reporter said, and some people say, and it goes, and it goes, you do that three or four times, and it becomes a, the general public opinion is, blah, blah, Blah. Now we're getting to the part where you can see the uh, boosters here. This also happens, uh, I'll use uh, both a liberal and conservative example so as not to offend anybody. On liberal forums, you uh, well actually it's a conservative first. On conservative forums, obviously they reflect conservative beliefs. There's a very uh, extreme lack of a difference of opinion, and they bounce these ideas off of each other, and the more people that agree, the more solidified the uh, agreement is. They'll also tell a story, then the next person will tell it, then they'll retell it, and each time it gets a little more extreme, a little more or less believable, and it continues to go around and around, and more people see it, nobody rebukes it, and it becomes an accepted thing. It becomes a part of their belief system, whether or not it's factual or not. You see the same kind of thing in a liberal 
website. They tend to generate most of the liberal beliefs. One person, uh, they'll report a story. I'll use something like police abuse or riot squad or something because usually liberal people that are protesting or having troubles with authorities. And it's always something very, very, very extreme. And their story is repeated over and over and the facts get a little bit blurred. And it turns into sort of a monologue against whatever they're talking about. A very concrete, solid example of an echo chamber that you can see is the very strong and stringent uh, atheist community on Reddit. Reddit uh, probably has a lot more atheists than normal because it's a very uh, strong community, very liberal in that respect. But on top of that, I would wager that most of the users on there are of, let's say, moderate faithfulness. They have their some degree uh, religious, probably not extremely religious, a, he a hefty number of atheists, and then a couple of militant. The militant groups have kind of taken over the website, and that's the prevailing story. You mentioned God in the comments. If there's a post about God, if there's a religious post, it's always something negative. The uh, jokes, they tend to repeat themselves until they become part of a belief system that ingrains it in the site and the people and it spreads to the people and it becomes a very solid thing. What we're going to talk about now is how this works. It works very simply. A person will propose an original idea or tell a story. Others like it, agree with it, they'll repeat it. It often gets exaggerated. The facts get changed just a little bit. Something gets omitted and you, they'll kind of like playing the game password. It goes from ear to ear to ear to ear. And as it goes down, there is eventually a slightly different or sometimes radically different version of the story that gets accepted by the group as a whole and it becomes a thing that it kind of sticks. Here's this uh, booster again just stuck in this corner. For Call of Duty, it'll work like this. Other games have other menus and venues and forums and stuff, but Call of Duty is largely YouTube-based. That's kind of where the bulk of the community likes to hang out, at least the hardcore bo uh, group, the very vocal group. So it'll start with a Call of Duty video. Somebody will have this brilliant original idea and they'll make a video about it. It'll be popular, others will like it, it'll warrant an audience, people will watch it, and some people will say, hey, I can do this too, I can do this in my game, or I would like to do this, or I would like to do this kind of video, and they'll imitate it. Uh, sometimes they'll imitate it directly, sometimes they'll copy it directly, they say uh, imitation is a form of flattery, uh, here they would call it raw instincting, that was another one that started, that's a whole different thing. Uh, there is also... Uh, sometimes people want to do better, they want to do more, so they'll exaggerate the idea, they'll exaggerate the gameplay, they'll go more extreme on the challenge, they'll go more extreme on the trolling, they'll go more extreme on whatever the popular thing is, and it starts to echo a little bit and reverberate, and the community seems to like it. They like whatever it is that's echoing, they like it, they like it, it's, it keeps going, it goes, the community tolerates it or they embrace it, and eventually it becomes a thing. It becomes a part of the game and it sticks in the community. Trolling videos, uh, quick scoping, tomahawk montages, the you edit with dubstep and you do slow motion instead of any of the other millions of ways you could edit a video that's the standard way to do it because that's the idea that's in this community that that's how it's done the Call of Duty echo chambers that are easily read and readily identifiable, number one is trolling videos. This is a big one, this is a new one, this wasn't as big of a thing not long ago. Trolling videos have always been a little bit popular, but they've really, really picked up in Call of Duty as of late. You see a lot of trolling videos, a lot of wannabe Minnesota Burns and uh, KYR Speed, that sort of stuff. And it, it's part of the community now. There's lots and lots of trolls in here. Another big one is quick scoping montages. Think about quick scoping before this is. I'm stepping outside my bounds of knowledge a little bit. I'm going to say optic. Optic were big guys pushing the quick scoping. A lot of the big clans doing quick scoping. Uh, old school back in the day. That was the thing. That was like the pinnacle of skill was to quick scope, and they showed it off, and everybody agreed. Yes, and I want to do it, and I'm going to do it, and I did it in games, and I got my friends doing it. We did make our videos, and it bounced around and around and around. Now, if you're not doing 360, no. Scope, YY, ladder shot, fakey, you know, quick scopes. You just suck at this game, apparently. Another one, this one's obvious, this one's a very simple one, high scoring gameplays. Everybody likes to see high scoring gameplays. You like to see people, uh, we're trying to box this guy in now, you like to see people stamp the other team into the ground, crazy high scores, nuclear, swarm dogs, whatever Moab top score is. That's how it's going to work. That one makes sense, of course, but you also lose things like uh, close games, challenging games, difficult games, pro play sometimes, and that's just how it went down. I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing. That's just how it happened. I, matter of fact, managed to do one myself with the foregrip. I started this whole thing. The foregrip is a placebo. It does nothing, and even after all the testing and blah, 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 I still see people very violently and vehemently anti-foregrip, and I, st I don't think it's a good attachment. I wouldn't recommend it. That's not where we're going, but it's part of the Call of Duty mantra now that the foregrip does nothing and it's going to be funny when Call of Duty ghosts come out. There's still going to be people that think the Call of Duty uh, or that the grip in this game does nothing because their friend told them that their friend told them that their friend blah blah blah. See he just rage quit. He couldn't handle being in that corner. It's all the way back to my video about the grip doing nothing. So in short if you, if you don't, I'm going to talk about what to do with an echo. You
you like and what to do with an echo you don't like. We're going to start with one you don't like first. If you don't like an echo, the way to do it, the way to kill it is you rebuke it in infancy. The people that say nothing, the good men that don't act and say nothing, they let these bad ideas grow in their community. They let the things in their community grow and they don't speak out against it. If you come out very hard against something you don't like early on and really poop on it, you'll be a dream crusher, like getting that dream crusher or cream, uh, achievement in uh, Fallout for telling that woman you don't like her book. Uh, kind of like that. You just crush it in its infancy and it won't grow. If you do like an idea and you want it to grow, all you have to do is repeat it or imitate it, exaggerate it, do it yourself. Uh, an idea is like a meme, kind of like an animal that lives in our heads and spreads from person to person. If you spread it, it grows and it becomes a thing. So if you do like it, spread it. If you don't like it, squash it. I hope you enjoyed this commentary. I hope you learned something useful. And I hope you maybe consider echoes from occasion. I had fun in this game. I had fun making the guy quit. I had fun with the other people challenging. Anyway, if you liked everything, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.